everybody, welcome to Bedford Talks. This is our latest episode, and I'm very excited to have Ryan White with us in the studio. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And Ryan, you are the first guest that is not... Uh, photo related. Oh, so right. uh, congratulations. You, well, thank you've you. broken that barrier. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, it's good to get it over to the audio side every once in a while, you know, show it some love. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm excited. I think, uh, you know, I, I we want to get to know you as a person, uh, uh, you know, you as as a, an audio engineer, uh, but also, uh, you're also a wealth of knowledge in terms of the equipment we're using. In fact, we're using all road products here for our audio. We have a road shotgun over there. We have a road uh, uh, video, uh, mic. video mic over here which is awesome. And then what you probably can't see, we'll, we'll, we'll insert that here a little bit later. Uh, these two pod mics that we're using, which I'm a huge fan of these pod mics, yeah. not only for the price, but also for how small they are. Yeah. But in comparison to how well they sound and all of this is being recorded into a Rode Caster Pro 2, which I've been a huge fan of. We've used it on several events, even at uh, the last, latest one we did together, which was uh, PhotoCon in Oklahoma City. The latest PhotoCon, we had a couple of them set up. You know, I brought a few, uh, you brought yours. We had a whole voiceover class and then a voiceover uh, demo on the Rode Caster Pro 2, showing what you can do on that. With a portable uh, booth. That, that was super booth. cool. Exactly, yes. 100% <laughs> uh, need to isolate the room and make sure things are under control, especially in the voiceover world. For the video world, you can get away with a little creativity. In the voiceover world, as you were doing earlier, you want close proximity and big, powerful voice. So you need a little bit of isolation on that. Well, and, and even if you're doing, uh, uh, you know, some like I've seen recently, I've seen behind the scenes of some animated movies. They're, they're in a controlled booth. Yeah. They can always add that reverb later. They can always add, you know, the, the characteristics of that environment later on. 100%. You want that flexibility. Yeah. You know, it's harder you, to, it's easier to add it than take it away. Yeah. Right. And in most cases, especially animated or even if it's post production audio, you, uh, in the environment you're in, you don't have as much control over some of those things. When you're in the studio, you're essentially just trying to emulate that. So you look at the environment. Okay. It's bigger, it's open. Uh, ironically, the, the more open the space, like an outdoor setting, is less reverberant in most cases than uh, even like a room we're in right now. But you guys have done a great job of isolating this room as well to where you get more control. And so if we can record in here, add a big reverb later for a cavernous sound or whatever, like you can you can always add that in post. And uh, you don't want to fix it in post, so you got to capture it properly first and then emulate it how you'd like. Exactly. So for those that don't know who you are, haven't seen you in our stores, haven't seen you at our events, uh, tell everyone a little bit about yourself and the kind of work you do. Sure. Um, my name is Ryan White. I am the sales support manager for Rode uh, for the Americas. And that is a new role for me. Before that, I was the uh, product specialist for the U.S. And essentially, I've been what I like to lovingly call the mic geek for Rode for nine years now. And before that, I was an audio engineer in just about every aspect. I've done anything from uh, video games and music. One of my favorites is just tracking bands, recording bands, and then mixing them uh in a studio environment or in a live environment both so uh, my very first professional gig ever was actually in an arena so i did uh, i was the what uh the house engineer i was the a2 as they call it so a1 would be the first step the boss you know if you will and then the a2 was their assistant so i started as the a2 moved into the a1 later on in that job and then uh eventually went to a recording school uh so that specifically drug me over into the uh studio world the more controlled environment and so uh I still to this day tell everybody that one of the best jobs you can have when you start out is live sound because the show must go on is no joke. You have to make it work. You have to make it work. They're not leaving. Right. <laughs> yeah, so so a refund? Yeah. Yeah. It really teaches and trains you up on some of the uh, the fixes that you need to know uh, if, if there's a problem, how do I get around it? Where do I look? And and that's one of the things, I've always been kind of the person who was tearing stuff apart, rebuilding it, trying to fix it, trying to not. And uh, I do wish I had kind of maybe gone back and done a little bit more in the uh, engineering side, meaning like literal engineers. We always joke that audio engineers are pretend engineers. That's what we call them at school. <laughs> and uh, that's not to offend any engineers uh, or audio engineers is more specific. Uh, I am an audio engineer and I joke about being a pretend engineer all the time because a true engineer, a mathematician, and you know, they get into the math of it all, the physics of it all, and they get really deep, a lot more education, a lot more stuff like that. Um, as an audio engineer, I pull a lot of faders, 
drums and I understand some of the physics of sound and things like that, but it's uh, not quite as deep as all of that. But when you are in the space, you need to know some of those techniques and, and, and solutions to problems so that you can overcome them. It's amazing what you can learn when the pressure's on. The thing is, time is money. Even even on like commercial sets where you're doing multiple takes, or you know, you're on a TV show, you're doing multiple takes. There's a lot of other people there <laughs> right. doing their job, yeah, probably doing their job quite well, and you're hoping that you're not the the kink in the chain that's right. going to cause everything to slow down, you know, and getting paid, you know, and and or running up the bill, right, on the other stuff too. So, are almost also paid for. Uh, what you can fix and how fast you can fix it versus right. the others, you know. And I go back. So this this is true for all the things, but no matter where you're where you're doing audio, but especially in the studio, when when you have the ability to be creative with time, mm -hmm. you can you can really like hone in on um, a job that you're trying to accomplish. You can also sit there and do that for six months. There are bands who basically record albums that you don't know uh, when it will end. And, I mean, that's some pretty deep pockets to do stuff like that. But it's possible. Mm -hmm. But at the exact same time, you don't get to say that. Like, most cases, as the audio engineer, you're depending on what your role is. But whomever is spending the money is the one who gets to determine how long or how fast this has to happen. And I've been trained by people who would basically, as soon as the the last gig came through mm -hmm. and this is live sound and studio, then you're setting up for the next gig and one, you're giving yourself as much time as possible mm -hmm. to set up and pull down. And if things go wrong, fix those things mm -hmm. before the client even sees that issue. Wow. And if that was in the same day, say noon is the end of this one and one o'clock's the start of that next one. Well, that hour is doing all that, stu that stuff and you have that much time, but you don't really have an hour. You have about 45 minutes so that you right. can kind of run through some more things and finalize. You don't want to be testing those things while the artist or the, uh, the client is still there. Right. So pre-production is crucial, but also knowing – so pre-production gets you to know – what to do, how to do it, where to do it, and then you can test for problems before you ever start being creative because that, uh, that'll kill a session right from the start. Right. And if you kill a session right from the start, you've killed the vibe but also spent somebody's money. And a yeah. good way to get fired is to spend somebody's money without their permission. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And in the show where the album may, may sound totally different. You yeah, know? true. Yes. So a lot of pre-production goes a long way in any of these things and asking the questions of where might I be at what time trying to do what mm -hmm. is going to get you there. Well, I, I, that's what I really like about the, the road, uh, system of products. I've, I've been using, uh, road for even before I started working for Bedford, actually the, uh, the, the wireless, uh, or I'm sorry, not the wireless, <laughs> the video mic pro that we have yeah. up here. Uh, I still have my, uh, mine that I bought in either 2012 or 2013. Perfect. <laughs> and, uh, and like, it still works like a champ. I've used it over and over and over. Um, but it's just one of those things that I can just rely on. Absolutely. And this is not anybody at road telling me to say any of this. This is just my experience. And that's yeah. why we have chosen to use all road stuff here in our studio for all, uh, all of our videos. Uh, and so if you don't see these mics or, or the broadcast mic that we've, we normally use on the table, right. uh, we're using the, uh, the wireless go Two and now the wireless pro, which yes. I'm a huge fan <laughs> of. And not that there was anything wrong with the, the nope. wireless go Two, nope. but, uh, it's just, it's technology it's progresses a step up. Technology progresses, exactly. right? And we run into that a lot and being the manufacturer and also one of the, the top leading brands for innovation and, mm -hmm. and uh, enhancement, really. You know, when you look at uh, where we started with the Wireless Go, that was an innovation. That was a, a change. We didn't change microphones. We changed how they operated, how you use them as a person. Uh, not only that, the industry changed a little bit. People became a little bit more content creators in the sense of run and gun mm -hmm. and fast paced. Uh, our attention spans are still short and right. uh, I'm not saying that's new, <laughs> but we certainly are taking on a lot more information in a faster rate of speed with phones and smart devices, the internet and et cetera. So 
creating that content fast is also a thing. So we look at that and go, how can you create these things faster? Well, what's one of the bottlenecks of setting up a video, running a lavalier, mm -hmm. running a cable, setting up a boom pole. So as the audio engineer, I always have to give the disclaimer that you're going to get better audio by getting microphones closer to the source in a general term, mm -hmm. in a right. basic overview of, of audio. Now I can also make it sound bad if I get too close Right. But your your threshold there is a heck of a lot smaller than right. as I literally as I get farther away from a microphone, it's exponentially getting worse. Right. And uh, it might be exactly what you need. Or if you're in a controlled environment, it's better than if you're not. And on and on the list and the, the rules and the, mm -hmm. the fundamentals of sound go. But in general, just getting it a little closer and taking the time to uh, get that going is important. So we create the wireless go original. And now you have a microphone that's affordable and is the microphone in the transmitter? You just yes. plug that box onto a shirt, a lanyard, a collar, whatever, and get to work. And uh, even from that point, you know, you see things like somebody putting maybe like that microphone up here. Well, then you learn that that doesn't sound very good. And so yeah. then you move it with a mag clip go, which is our little mag uh, magnetic clip on a go system. And then you can put it on your chest and like here. And then you can wear a t-shirt instead of a button up or, exactly. you know, so you got to look at those limitations and, and then also the results of uh, those things and, and try to replace, try to refit, try to repair, try to fix. So coming up with a solution like that in a wireless go, now I can interview 15 people back to back to back to back. And the whole time I'm not even necessarily running a lavalier system on them. Then tomorrow right. you sat down and you're doing a professional interview or otherwise, and you don't want a microphone in somebody's face or otherwise. Right. Lavalier with the wired system and then the wireless go is just one of the smallest belt packs you've ever had. Yes. So. And it's a recorder, which it, for that redundancy, yep. which uh, when that update came out, <laughs> I was just like over the moon. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So speaking on, uh, you know, progression of technology and so forth, that. So with the wireless go, it wasn't recording on board. So we, you do things, uh, where you might have those two microphone setups and things like that. And then you introduce the wireless go Two, and it's got onboard recording at 24 bit 48 K, which is still clippable. I mean, a yes. little bit in the future now, right? With the wireless yes. pro and 32 bit flow here in a second, yes. but with onboard recording, now you have your redundancy built right into the unit, give or take. So I have a microphone there. It records right to that little block and then that wirelessly transmits its own signal onto the camera the camera also records it and if something happens between that mic and the camera you can you can grab the audio off of the transmitter and replace it so there's your redundancy right there no second microphone needed but guess who has done live sound and has a few trust issues and will <laughs> still probably set up a boom pole in the room or yes you know what i mean so right now we're using the the roadcaster pro 2 with pod mics which are wired and yes. for the most part, a dynamic microphone is just a little more controlled and you can kind of see the results before it happened. We're also in the studio today. So if something happens and we're messing up in some way, we can re-record it no problem. But if you're out doing an interview and you, you have one shot at this, redundancy right. and choices are the only way you really get around it. So I also yes. apologize for being the mic salesman, quote unquote, <laughs> and telling you to have two microphones running simultaneously. But even with a wireless Go 2 or now into the wireless Pro, you can have multiple microphones, you can have the lavaliers, you can have the onboard recording, and get all of that right from one bundle. So we're kind of meeting you halfway on on how to solve those problems that we know are in the industry. And so finally, with the Wireless Pro in 32-bit float, if you're not familiar with it, it's the unclippable technology. So the microphone is recording at many layers and it's full headroom. Right. So if from, from off to all the way as loud as it can go in the microphone itself without clipping, mm -hmm. we're recording all of those. And then with a 32-bit float recording session on your software, you can manipulate that. Mm -hmm. So if I were to scream, all of a sudden I got really excited and I'm saying this whole, you know, two, three, four sentences at a very loud rate and very, very loud volume versus the rest of it. I can go into software after that happens and turn it down and regain all of the fidelity without fake artificial replacement or, um, you know, computer technology to try to repair it. You're not actually fixing it. You're just going and grabbing that window 
of audio that is not clipped and moving it to that spot. So it's in, it's an incredible, incredible software and technology. Definitely recommend everybody go and read a little deeper into it. Not even necessarily the science of it all, because you'll go a little cross-eyed sure. with the science of it, but <laughs> <laughs> just the technique. How to use it. Rode has two very good videos. One is about demystifying the entire 32-bit float uh, idea, and the other one is an example. So you straight up get to hear, you know, a whisper turned up and then a scream turned down. It's not really a scream, but talking right. loud. And so if that happens in your session, uh, in your interview, you just grab it and post and fix the problem. And it's it's now acceptable to fix mm-hmm. and post. <laughs> you see, I'm still I'm still so used to having uh, like an audio recorder. Uh, so I, I we in fact we still use the audio recorder, and this is just how ingrained it is in me. Just that getting it wrong enough times that you're like, I don't want that to happen again. Right. I'll still record audio even on the uh, even on the broadcaster uh, that I'll have boomed over here. Uh, I'll record it where I normally have the levels and then I'll have it six dB lower yeah. just in case. I know I'm not going to be loud. I know I'm not going to get that excited yeah. on the on the mic, but it's just I've done this enough times <laughs> and I'm like some people just get to that point and they really want to tell you this part of the story or they want to imitate. Well, somebody yelled over to me and they actually, you know, yeah. <laughs> project it quite a bit more. But yeah. again, you want to still be able to use that. Like I've, I've literally done it to where, um, you know, I, I'll have that normal and the 60 be lower and I'll just, you know, envelope edit that down and push yep. this one up and, you know, <laughs> so, just to match it, you know. Funny enough, Rode has added that to our microphones now. So the VideoMic Pro Plus that you have right over mm-hmm. there. Um, and obviously with a with an NTG series, a professional series microphone, right. the XLR and it's one mono microphone, what we've done for years. Mm-hmm. And so it's amazing that you're saying this because this is a pre-production technique that our audience needs to hear is that we used to just tape two microphones together. No yeah. joke. And vo- we were talking about voiceover earlier or like cartoons where they're doing the uh, dialogue replacement to that or adding the dialogue into it. You'll often see two microphones and two similar but different positions and then also i guarantee you on the console that they're recording they're using those to record they got different levels on each so that you know i always use robin williams as an example because oh, yeah. he was a natural at this and he was just as epic as robin williams is but uh go watch miss doubtfire when in that opening scene you know yes. and he's doing his voiceover stuff for that parrot or whatever yeah. that it was i think um I'm, now I'm trying to remember if there are two microphones in that scene. It's kind of irrelevant to I the point. I can't remember because I was just, I was so, yeah. you know, <laughs> caught by his brilliance. His performance, you know, yeah. Just in that opening scene. Absolutely. Alone. Now I'm going to have to go look at it again too. But <laughs> in most cases, they'll have two microphones. Even if they don't have two microphones, obviously they're setting levels properly and so forth so they can have that performance. But what happens when you have two microphones up there is you can let the actor, let that person be what they're going to be. And in most cases, you get a larger headroom. And more capabilities of capturing that sound at the proper level with options, right? right. And with uh, with the Rode microphones, we realize that the industry, again, as more of us noticing the the, the bottleneck in the in the problem, uh, that well, they have to get two microphones to do this task. Well. In a camera, most people don't realize that a stereo input, they know these words, they just don't put it together, that a stereo input is technically two mono signals, dual mono. And so stereo is a left channel mono and a right channel mono. And then if you pump those out to speakers or headphones, that left goes to your left and that right goes to your right. And if you get the exact same performance out of both equal times, you get what's called a ghost center. And so now it feels, sorry, I hit the mic. 101. Yeah. So it's right out the center, right? It, and our brain is doing that now. Our ears hear them at the same level, the exact same performance, no phasing. And it sounds like it's dead, uh, dead in the center. And that's, that's what dual mono is. So Rode looks at it and goes, well, this is a mono microphone and we don't need both left and right simultaneously. So if you're not going live and you have the ability to edit and post, we have what we call our safety track. Mm -hmm. And so our safety channel, safety track, it's a left at full volume and a right at 10 dB down in most cases. And now you've just created a two microphone effect from the same performance all in one mono microphone. So they're just taking that same signal, splitting it through what's called a pad Mm -hmm. and turning it down. And then you have two signals on your camera so that if you're your left track clips your camera, 
then you just go in that moment to the right track, replace the audio, and it, in most cases, it will be able to save the day. Exactly. And, and in most editing software, uh, most video editing software, which is one I'm familiar with, uh, I'm sure it's very similar in, you know, Reaper or Audition or, or those yeah, other any ones. Yeah, the that audio you can ones that that's up. not just video. Exactly. You can double mm-hmm. that up in the left and the right channel, usually in like two clicks. You know, it's, it's yeah. very simple to yeah, change. And, and so when you're... Putting that file into the computer, you will have a left at full volume and a right turned down a little bit. Well, all you do is split those out and pan them center. Mm -hmm. And so when they're pan center, now they're additive to each other. You just mute the second track Mm -hmm. and use the main track in center. And then if something goes wrong, then you just supplement that other track into your first main track. Mm -hmm. And now you're replacing anything bad that might have happened throughout that. So keeping uh, the innocent anonymous, if you need to, uh, do you have an embarrassing story from your time in this industry? Uh, of who doesn't, <laughs> right? Uh, I actually, I have two for you. <laughs> um, right off the top of my head, I can think of two times where, uh, you know, you kind of, I didn't hurt anybody. Nothing was harmed, but uh, I just wish, <laughs> you know, that... Uh, you know, either I did something different or some situations, you know, happen differently. But the truth is we're in art and, and th- things are competitive and sure. and you run into situations where, you know, uh, fortunately, I've never really messed up a show or got a client fired or cost anybody <laughs> too much money or anything like that. But uh, the first one I always tell for this is actually uh, both inspirational and <laughs> just a little embarrassing because of how it all played out. And yeah, and I was I was new to the game, so I well, wasn't actually you know my first ever job. Like I said, I, I knew the right person at the right time and uh, got the job at an arena. But uh, after that fell through, it kind of got to a place where our arena was replaced by a new one in the city okay. and stuff like that. So I, I wanted to go to school and get that job, you know, get the paper that everybody wanted if you were interviewing and stuff like that. So part of that was an internship. And so I am deciding between, you know, New York City, Nashville, L.A. or this or that. I looked into one for New York and I was uh, a teacher of mine who's very kind to do so, put my name out there for this to you. But I found out I was going to be like one of, you know, eight or nine people going At the same time, I didn't want to be one of eight or nine. I wanted to be kind of like one of one. So another teacher of mine, also very kind to do this for me and stuff, kind of lined me up with a couple uh, jobs in L.A. So I make a decision. I moved to L.A. And with internships and with, you know, being a student and stuff like that, you're getting into a house quick. You're probably I was sharing it with four dudes at one point. You know, we're just trying to make it work on either no income or low income or whatever. And so my first day out there, I am scheduled to go meet up with the guy who's hiring me. Uh, and my roommate is actually already there. He was what was called a cycle ahead. So he was three weeks ahead of me. We both got lined up for being this gentleman's new interns and he had been working three weeks. We've been talking since everything's going great. They're still expecting me from all I know. Mm -hmm. So I get there, uh, we get there together because we're roommates. So we just ride together and and uh, it's about 9 a.m., you know, and the boss actually didn't show up until about 11 or 12. And I had been cleaning a closet, you know, and he, you know, this was in a composition house. So job was kind of whatever you wanted it to be. If you wanted to work till 1 a.m., you did, you know, and it wasn't music studio or anything like that. There wasn't really a client that was coming into the studio. So he came in when he came in. And so I was there cleaning the closet for a good like two or three hours. And he walks by me quickly, like as I'm in the closet, I kind of look and see the boss walk by. I just wave, you know, he waves and smiles and kind of goes on. Um, My roommate comes to me, it's getting closer to lunchtime. So he's like, hey, we're going to go grab lunch. So my roommate takes me to go get lunch. We get the lunch ordered. They pay for my lunch. Everything's fine. I'm all happy, whatever. And he chooses this moment to drop the bomb, which is, I'm sorry to have to do this, man. Uh, The lunch is on us, but we don't need you. I'm like, am I being fired on my first day? I didn't even work half a day. I was going to say, you're not even a full eight hours in. Nope. I didn't even really, I didn't shake the hand of the guy who was like hiring me on and so (laughs) forth. You know, like, again, I mean him no ill will. Uh, Nobody really put it together. What I found out later was he determined in the three weeks that he had my roommate and buddy working with him that he only needed or wanted one instead of two. So he signed up for more than he wanted. (laughs) Oh, Learned it the hard way. With the busy schedules of Hollywood and otherwise forgot that I was coming in. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he sees this stranger in the closet too going like, 
who dead? <laughs> you know, it's me. You know, this guy who just moved from Arizona to, so from Kansas City, where I'm originally from, to Arizona, did school, and then to LA. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm giving it my all. <laughs> and I get fired first day in LA. So I called a teacher who's putting this all together, and he was like, what? <laughs> I had no idea. I promise. I swear. And I'm just like, I'm just red as can be because I'm I'm literally running back with my you know, tail tucked because I'm like, <laughs> I swear I didn't do anything. <laughs> well, because you're playing back the, you know, the five minutes or three hours, whatever it was, yeah. you're just going, what did I do? Was there like a was strict, was there a strict no waving policy right. that I didn't know about? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do not make eye contact. <laughs> nope. Nothing weird. Nothing mal. No, nothing malicious. You know, this is the artist. This is the talent. Or yeah. Whatever they put in the contract, yep. you know, they did not need any more help in this particular <laughs> composition house. Uh, that teacher was very kind to call up a couple other people, even called the, the, the person, found out the story of what happened, why, oh, yeah. and, and they apologized profusely and everything was fine. And uh, I'm still friends with them on Facebook. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, that makes it okay. Um, I, I ended up getting another composition internship. It was perfectly fine. I worked for the guy uh, who did Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Oh, Swiddell. that's cool. Yeah, and it was a great job. Um, I will tell you my second, kind of in line with this, because okay. it was the next internship. So I got a job working as an intern after Klaus uh, with Stephen Slate. And Stephen Slate did uh, Slate drums, Slate digital plug-in emulations, things like that. And just one of the coolest jobs I've ever had. Met a lot of fun, cool people. Mm -hmm. uh, one of these, now, uh, this is me also apologizing to this person if they ever have happen to see this for some reason, you know, but, uh, one of the cool people we had come into the studio was Joaquin Phoenix. And I'm really paying attention to what I'm saying right now because of his name. He's got a very unique name and I am so up in my own head all the time that I, I know how he spells his name, you know, it's spelled very uniquely. And I guess, so we go through the whole night, everything's glorious. He's a great dude. He had some great music to show and, uh, he was getting his album mastered and all kinds of stuff. I actually need to look back and see, you know, uh, what happened with that, if it did officially get released and so forth. But anyway, night's coming to a close and everything. And so the three, the four of us, so there's three, uh, working and then Joaquin and we're saying our goodbyes and everything. We shake hands and I show him to the door and show him out. And as he's walking down the path, going to leave the studio and so forth, I didn't know I did this, but apparently I called him what my brain was saying his name was spelled like, which was Joaquin. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so without skipping a beat, so I close the door and everything. I do like vividly remember, I can see his face right now, like... <laughs> <laughs> like very confused and uh he did make the face though oh yeah like... totally yeah because he's you know he's a good 20 feet down the the path by now you know <laughs> yeah. i'm just saying my last like you know thanks for coming see you later and i guess i said his name wrong very very wrong and i didn't know it up in my head everything was fine i i closed the door and my boss without even turning from his desk so i'm i'm seeing the back of his head right now and he just goes you know his name's joaquin right and i went yeah duh <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of all confident. Who doesn't know that? And he goes, you know, you didn't say that, right? And I went, <laughs> I, I of course said his name right. And I look over at the other end and he just kind of like gives me the sad, like, <laughs> sorry, man. You definitely had it wrong. <laughs> no. Just brr. <laughs> So I apologize, Joaquin. <laughs> he's going to remember me for the wrong reason. I, he's never going to remember that at all. And, and, and I just, you know, of course, I'm new to uh, this world and seeing, you know, famous people. And I've never really been, you know, when I was at the arena, I walked by many of artists and, and was in the same room with Sheikh hands with many a uh, different artists and that's all great that's what we do it's art it's very cool and fun mm -hmm. to meet those people i've never really been starstruck and uh you know again just up in my own head <laughs> not in the world that this person and our we were living in i was just in my own little world and uh i uh, apparently my brain and my mouth just at that time had the connection to say it as it was spelled instead of what it really is so you know i do apologize <laughs> Oh man, that's great. I don't even know how to follow that up because that's that's a great story. <laughs> I said that to my best friend and uh, his brother and their family. If they put me on speakerphone for it, because my best friend had heard the story, because I told him like right away, like, Ugh! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I messed up. <laughs> and uh, his older brother just, I remember this too, because his older brother was just like, man, like, is Ryan cool? <laughs> and then he didn't say that. He's just like, you could kind of feel like, wow, that's really cool. And then I told the story and he goes, that's the Ryan we know. <laughs> it's like goofy and not put together at all. Yeah, so... <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix. That's what happens when your brain's like, can we shut it? Can we start shutting things down? Can we just not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's fine. He doesn't need he doesn't need to think about anything yeah. anymore. He's, he's just moving boxes. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's fine. Let's yeah. conserve power, you yeah. know. And honestly, if uh, the most embarrassing thing that happened to me in Hollywood was saying someone's name incorrectly uh, in an excited moment, yeah, probably pretty good. There's probably worse. <laughs> yeah, so exciting stuff. That's... That's great. I really hope he sees this, by the way. <laughs> I do too. Give me a call. You know, how I met him was I was doing, like, because m- part of my job was to keep the studio clean. I was doing dishes up in the kitchen. Oh, yeah? And uh, the dishes, the sink is facing away from the main door. I just hear the door close, and I'm just like, hey, how's it going? You know, just don't even turn around. Oh, right. You know, and then as I turn around, and this is how humble the guy is, too. Um, as I turn around, Joaquin. You know, and big fam, love his work, you oh, know, yeah. and I'm just like, oh, hey, man, how's it going? You know, mm-hmm. good to see you, you know, and he's just like, he, he approaches and he goes to shake my hand and I'm like, oh, my hands are dirty and wet, you know, I'm sorry. He goes, <laughs> he goes, shake my hand. I went, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, like, I can respect that. He's like, I don't care if your hands are wet and dirty. You're doing the dishes. Good job. You know? and, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. He, he was not in any way like above. A diva. <laughs> no, he's not above me for like. That's Being awesome. here and doing that, it was great. And just just a good dude. And then I end the night like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really neat to see uh, we have people that are going from shooting stills and into video, whether it, that's something that they are kind of forced to do on a, a an occupational basis or that's something they want to do in terms of, you know, filming uh, birds or wildlife. I know we were on a phone call with a customer about that, you know, yeah. how to get – you know, wildlife from far off. They want to get into a new educational piece for themselves. Like, what do I do? Or maybe, like you said, jobs. I get so many calls from people who are not video or audio at all, not even photo, but they are now all of a sudden dropped right into a content creation place to advertise their work. And uh, you see that a lot with freelancers. And uh, I mean, authors is a good example of that, you know, where it's not necessarily funded uh, or they're kind of their own company. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they're they're writers, but they're also content creators. And uh, if they have to do it themselves, and that's the budget that allows, they they got to now learn how to do audio and video, mm-hmm. all in one swing. So, yeah. and it's good that they're coming in with an open mind about it, not going, "This is terrifying. This is brand new." Uh, oh, they're doing that too. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they are. <laughs> I'm sure they're just hiding it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing I have to do. I don't know what to do. Please help. <laughs> Please hold my hand through this process. Yeah, you know? yeah, and I'm happy to do so. <laughs> Definitely. Well, and something I've noticed that, um, and it's easy when, especially when you don't know anything or you're brand new to something. Uh, if people say, "Well, I'm I'm new or I don't know this," well, that's a great place to be. It's a great place to start because you're brand new. You don't have any preconceived notions about this or that. So the terminology I'm going to use is probably going to be brand new to you. And, uh, so I, I think that's a really cool place for uh, a lot of those people to come from, uh, cause they already know how to get a good image, especially from their 2000, $4,000 camera, a really, really nice camera, but their audio is garbage. You know, <laughs> what, something I've noticed is that it doesn't take much to get really good audio from the get go. It does not. It it takes a few in in all of my classes. You've been in quite a few of them. Uh, you'll you'll notice a theme from the microphone one hundred and one space, and and I've tried to enhance that a little bit better, but both shorten it up and make it a little bit more concise, and then also uh, a little more clear. There is some jargon that needs to be learned, but in that, I always try to end with why does it matter. So if you forget the jargon, it doesn't matter what the word is, unless you need to look it up again. Sure. Right. But you can also, if, if you know what you're trying to accomplish, that's where you can actually do the, do the work. So I usually start with two things and that is, well, actually let me start with three things, which is just get the microphone closer is kind of a one oh one. Just how do I make this better? I bought a microphone and to your point of like the person who buys the kit, that's $5,000 and then the microphone that's like 30. Right try not to do that. Right. And I'm not even talking as an, I'm now just talking as an audio engineer. Uh, what I try to tell people that come to me for consultation is an average. 
try yes. to average it out across the things. I mostly focus on the look, uh, meaning the video, what's capturing it, the light, which is also part of the look, but creating a more uh, distinguished, proper, uh, exciting look is the lighting and then the audio. Right. So those three things, if you're averaging them out, because you're going to find yourself with this amazing camera, no lighting, no audio. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and right. what tends to actually be statistically speaking, what causes your video to fail? Yes. So I am not also being this, uh, maybe you need to say it, but I'll just go ahead and start <laughs> the conversation. And that's most statistics are that if your audio is bad, your video will fail. Yes. And so we tend to, because of the way our brains work and the fact that audio is delivering the story uh, telling literal words mm -hmm. to tell a story. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you have to have it there. If it's not there, then people will leave your video to go find the story elsewhere. I always That's say true. that you could be the best guitar teacher in the world, best guitar player in the world, and if you can't hear them play the guitar and talk about how to do the thing, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're leaving. It, it could be immaculate looking, mm -hmm. but if you can't hear it properly, then you're going to leave because you can't get the full story. So audio mm -hmm. is crucial in that space. And so that's, that's kind of the one that is not really technological related. It's just mm -hmm. that if you move it closer, the microphone can capture more of you and yes. less of what's around you. That's mm -hmm. just simple, basic physics. And so once you start getting into actually microphone selection, I will usually teach my classes in a microphone type, a polar pattern, and a frequency response mm -hmm. kind of terms. And I'll just keep the whole class in microphone 101 with those three things. So again, I'm trying to get to why it matters. So a type of microphone might be a dynamic microphone, like a pod mic mm -hmm. here, or a condenser microphone, like our shotguns that are over on the camera, right. or a lavalier, which is a condenser, mm -hmm. just a lavalier is a different form factor. And then uh, when we talk about polar patterns, we actually are talking about where the microphone captures, but most importantly, in my opinion, where it doesn't capture, where it reduces yes. things. You're not going to get rid of anything 100% ever because physics doesn't allow that. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm very much shortly summing this up. But if I talk into the back of this microphone, it's turned down significantly. And so my voice will run around and get captured by the mic. But mm -hmm. I think... For the most part, it's pretty easy to know that this microphone is what's called end address, right here mm -hmm. talking into the end of it. And so this is pretty easy for me to just get on access and talk into it. Right. If we were to be on a live interview, or let's say you and I were at some form of like Comic-Con or something, and we're in a noisy environment, mm -hmm. and we're up against uh, a decent wall here behind mm -hmm. us, but out there is a lot of noise going on, we're going to try to point these microphones away from those noise, right. that, that noise. Um, equally, like you and I right now, we're at about 45. This mm -hmm. is going to help reduce your voice going into my microphone right. and my voice going into your microphone. Mm -hmm. And that just helps kind of keep each of us isolated and sounding good. Right. The final thing, and I won't spend a lot of time here, is the frequency response, which is uh, like a lot of the buttons that you can push on a microphone. So if you got what's called a roll off, you can turn down the low frequencies. Right. And then if you got like a high frequency boost, you can turn up the high frequencies. These things add like clarity or get rid of some wind rumble or air conditioner rumble and things like that. So they're important to the end results, but you got to know what they do. And you got to mm -hmm. know why they matter. So uh, the why to those three, those three things is... Microphone type is going to tell you how the mic responds to you. Mm -hmm. If it's dynamic, it's going to be less responsive. You got to be closer to it. Right. And then if it's a condenser microphone, it's going to be more sensitive. It's going to pick up a lot more things. You got to be uh, aware of what other things you might be capturing in that room you're in or in that space mm -hmm. that you're in. Equally, how far away from that microphone you are is going to introduce more things to it. So you care about the microphone type because it's going to help you capture what you want and not the things you don't want. Right. Equally, polar pattern, as I said, it's where you capture and where you don't capture, where it reduces things and where it amplifies things. And so why you care is because then it tells you where you can point things to capture those same things you want and those same things you don't want, right? Mm -hmm. Finally, frequency response, why do I care about that? Is because it, it's your final tone. Right. If I put a roll off on and I reduce some of the air conditioner noise, not only did I get rid of noise, but it also changes how some of those low frequencies respond to yes. the entire recording. Um, if we do what's called a pad, that turns down. I think I mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. It turns down the overall volume. Well, if things are really loud, car race, I'm from the Midwest, so gunshots, things like that. <laughs> it takes a loud source and turns it down to where it's right, usable. Right. right. If you don't have 32-bit float, then you need to be it's able hard, to turn yeah. it down. Yeah. <laughs> and then we do, even in our microphones, we add pre 
amps, which turn things up. Right. Most people think that 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 button is to make you louder, but the problem is what else gets louder when you turn it up? Everything else. Yes. So you got to you got to take all three of these con- these techniques and, and combine them together. And uh, the preamp allows us to turn down the camera, which might be a little bit noisier than our microphone. Mm-hmm. And so when you have to turn up the camera and turn up the microphone and turn up everything, you get a lot more noise, a lot more hiss, a lot mm-hmm. of more circuitry problems. And so why you care about that pad and that preamp is that you can minimize those problems before they ever happen. And right. So, you got to know those few things. Again, I know I threw a lot of a lot of those different things out, but it's it's three things with a few whys, mm-hmm. and you're you are there as a beginner. You're going to be past a lot of <laughs> yes. a, a lot of amateurs, even you know, like beginner. Uh, sorry, uh, like prosumers, as you might call them. Right, you know, people right. who are hobbyists but have been doing it for a while, or you'd be right up there with them. And I always just tell people to practice a couple different times. Turn mm-hmm. on your TV, put the microphone up in front of it. And turn it up, turn it down, turn your microphone up, turn your microphone down, Mm -hmm. turn your camera up, turn your camera down, record it with the microphone, without the microphone, put it closer, put it farther. (laughs) Once you do just a few of those things... You go, you, you are, well, you are the majority of the way there. And also monitoring. Oh my as gosh, you go. I forgot monitoring. <laughs> yeah. Didn't, I did. Thank you so much. That's, you're absolutely correct. I mean, just like you're seeing, you know, I just like I checked these cameras. Yeah. I'd make sure the exposure was right. Uh, but then right before we started recording, I listened to both of our mics on yes. here. And honestly, I'm, so, I'm such a fan of these headphones. Yeah. NTH 100s for those who don't know. Ta-da. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's right in front of me. <laughs> I've got Made a them, background, but it'll yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Made them very um, professional from a uh, response side. So mm-hmm. the audio that comes out of them is very flat and very true to what you're doing. Yes. So uh, they're not hyped for, say, music or this or that. You are going to hear what you're doing. So if you're editing, mm-hmm. if you're mixing, if you're content creating, if you're playing games, you can do all of it on those. And then in most cases, if you're just wanting to listen to music, you just EQ the source. Exactly. And now you have it EQ'd in your headphones as well. Mm-hmm. But we're trying to give you a product product that is the exact result you need for all these jobs yes and then last but not least we made them hyper comfortable <laughs> yeah yeah i was gonna say i noticed the pads here and yep so the pads are a cooling gel oh my okay. wife's favorite yeah so the cooling gel is gonna obviously reduce some of that heat that friction and the heat that is caused by just right. being on your head the entire day and then secondarily it's alcantara Fabric. I don't even know if I can say secondarily. It's might it might be primarily. <laughs> it's it's a fabric from sports cars. <laughs> I think literally BMW sports cars are using that fabric. And wow. so we wanted to make it very soft, very uh, responsive to um, not being a pressure point item on your head. You know, I wear glasses. I'll wear those on a three hour flight. Oh yeah, so that'll question. hold on to the yeah. Yeah. So I used to have to do the whole like yeah. <laughs> put the <laughs> put the headphones here <laughs> and just keep them up there. And now I can just leave them like this, and that uh, they they get out of the way exactly like they're supposed to while still isolating mm-hmm. and being comfortable. And then again, lowering pressure points and mm-hmm. and also sounding professional <laughs> and making sure it sounds good before you press record. Right? Exactly. Making sure you're identifying yeah. issues like we were talking about the yeah. you know the stadium. Uh, you know, audio engineers, you know, identifying issues. Right. Yeah. As if, soon as you can. You especially know. in film, right? So let's talk Absolutely. about the film side, right? If you're interviewing somebody, well, you're not even in the shot. If you're not wearing headphones, listening to that recording happening in real time, you're not going to notice some of those problems. Mm. Airplanes end up in every stinking recording. I don't know how, right. but they're loud and our brains are really good at responding or like hearing them. Uh, trains, I've had a customer call before where they had a church bell in their recording and they were pretty upset about oh, it. Man. And I mean, I as nicely as I could, I was just like, you're going to you're going to get a church bell in your recording because that's what they're meant, they're meant to be heard. They're meant to yeah. be loud. Yeah, you have yeah. to wait, you know, for those to go by and then then start your recording again. If you couldn't do that, then unfortunately you are, you're in one of those moments where you had to get what you had to get. And uh, most people forget it in that scenario. If you're chasing down your paparazzi and you're chasing down somebody famous and then the church bell goes off in the distance, well, they say <laughs> something profound. Well, for most part, you know, it's quick, short to the point you're hearing the person anyway. Mm-hmm. Your audience might not even hear the church bell. Right. But if you're doing an interview and you know that church bell goes off every hour, schedule around it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or just take five <laughs> while you get that out of the way and move on after the church bell goes off. I've had dogs. Like I, I, I There was a point where I was doing oh, yeah. uh, church testimonials and we were shooting them in people's houses. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple of times where we were like, the dog is coming right up to the window. Yeah. They see everybody. And so it's you like. You hear that paw on the window and then you hear that. 
softball. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like they, they think you're in danger or something. But we're uh-huh. using shotgun mics. We have actually, we had one or two shotgun mics overhead. Yep. And then I think as redundancy, we had uh, a, a lav, uh, you know, wireless lav on the person itself, which was fine. But it's like that dog is still going to show up yep. because of how loud they are. And so I think we had to <laughs> ask a few people, hey, can, can somebody else in the house walk the dog for like another 10 more minutes? Seriously, you know? take it out for 30 minutes, you know, bring on back. We're, we love dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. in your recording, they're so recognizable and they are loud and they, uh, their whole purpose of their bark is to get heard just like that church yes. bell we were talking about. So, I mean, uh, it's coming through the mic. Yeah. Dynamic condenser, polar pattern, not polar pattern. <laughs> it's coming through. <laughs> yeah. So you have to, it, that's all part of the pre-production that mm-hmm. we talked about. So if I can stress it even more, doing your due diligence prior to hitting record mm-hmm. is just as important, if not more important than the choices you make the rest of the way. Absolutely. Well, and something I've noticed uh, when I, I don't shoot a lot of weddings now, but uh, there was a time where I was doing that. Mm-hmm. And something that really helped me a lot, not only did I have a, a, a video mic pro on top of my camera, which was great getting a lot of that environmental sound. Yeah. Uh, obviously not reaching down the aisle. But it's, 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 it's You're not going to reach down the do aisle, that. but it's going to get a lot of reverb. Right, exactly. <laughs> but what I, I ended up doing, and I was very pleased to see, uh, I can't remember what year they came out, but the Smart Lav Plus. Yeah. And I favorites. still have mine. In yeah. fact, I think I bought a second one. Uh, but I plugged that into my phone, and uh-huh. this is when they still had the, the jack. Uh, Here you go. <laughs> So we all miss that, don't we? The, the, yeah, yeah, the TRS jack. Now you TRS can buy a dongle jack. to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not yeah. even a road dongle. <laughs> so I make sure that, that that dongle is in the bag with the... Yeah, uh, I have three of them in my backpack right you? now. <laughs> yeah, I swear. Because <laughs> it's uh, that, that little bag that I carry around is kind of my production, like oh, yeah. uh, Murphy's Law kit, if you yes. will. What's, what, what's going to go wrong is going to go wrong. What could go wrong is going to go wrong. Yes. Is specifically what Murphy's saying. And uh, you just kind of prepare for a few of those things that are your are staples of the mm-hmm. industry and this goes back to the live sound stuff show must go on mm-hmm. and that adapter is now a real thing that has to exist yes and this further past that so you yeah. have to have that one yeah uh, and further but, past that it has to be trrs yes that's what exactly plus right. is so with that uh, third ring on there um, yep. but what what i found that to be super useful is uh um is so I would actually record on my phone. Obviously, I'm not using the phone at the wedding, and usually I'll grab the groom's phone because he's not using it at the wedding. Right. We're about to do this ceremony. It's you on know. airplane mode, so you can use it safely without yes. getting Wi-Fi interruption or that phone call. You, I hope you had your phone on it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, because <laughs> texts will uh, pop through. Yeah, you get some phone call interrupt. from grandma exactly. that couldn't make it. And <laughs> exactly. Like, How'd it go? <laughs> We're doing it right now. Right uh, in the middle of grandma. <laughs> 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 but I'll put it in an airplane mode and then I'll just set it to record uh, usually 15 minutes before. And I'll say, and like before I clip it onto the person, I'll say, groom Mike 10 minutes before the ceremony. Yeah. That way I have this peak in my audio when I pull it into my editing software. Uh-huh. And then since it's a phone, it's recording directly to the device itself. And of course, audio doesn't take up that much room at all in these phones. And then I'll put the phone in their jacket pocket. I'll do the same thing to the pastor. And so that way I have, there's three people. Yep. And I usually don't mic up the the, the bride. Some people do. Uh, but it I depends can usually, on asking. You got to ask them. They're the boss. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I don't want to wear this thing. It's like some black thing on yeah. their what, we white make dress. We're white you know? now. <laughs> yes. Yes, you do now. Um, but what I'll do is I'll, you know, of course, I'll get the officiator right. and then the groom. And then I'll just boost her signal because... The bride and groom are standing very yeah. close to, you know, yeah. a, a foot away from each other. For the most part, you're For close proximity part. in that church. And and uh, honestly, having direct lavalier sound in the church mm-hmm. is also sometimes a little bit daunting, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, or uh, it triggers something in our brain because we're like, that place should be noisier, more reverberant yes. than that. You see this big, giant space, and then you hear these people, like, really close, and they sound really good, you <laughs> yeah. know? And just real, like, in your face. And then uh, I'll actually take the Video Mic Pro mm-hmm. that you were talking about having been down in the aisle a little bit. Right. Take the audio from it and turn it up underneath those labs mm. just a hair and uh, make sure they're in line and all that stuff. And then that right. way you get a little bit of the room into it. Yes. Now, because you're distanced from the the bride at this point, you might already have enough of that reverb just from that one lavalier. Right, right. right. And you blend everybody together, and by the time it's all said and done, it, when they're level matched, you might have enough reverb to where it does sound good and natural, mm-hmm. and you're covered. All from your cell phone. Yes. 
and then what I'll do after the ceremony ends, um, I'll take the phones. Hey, thank you. And you know, usually they'll go take photos together or they'll have a moment together, having a prayer or whatever. Um, I'll take the phones and then I will airdrop that <laughs> either to my phone or I will send it to Dropbox immediately. Right. Yep. I have done plenty of weddings too where the, the bride and groom and the officiant were totally cool with stick mic technique. Really? You just, yeah. Because, I mean, it depends on the couple, right? It's just, oh, sure. It's worth asking the question. This is where pre production comes mm. in. And I have a checklist. Yeah. You know, I'm just straight up asking these questions upon interview and, and the whole conversation of just like getting to know them, asking for mm. their – feeling them out for how they're going to react. Is this person right. going to be very, very angry if even the slightest thing goes wrong? Right. Or are they cool with just about everything? You know, and I've met plenty of people who are just like, I don't care. I'm marrying this person over here. Just put a mic in my face. I don't care. <laughs> right. I want the story to be good. What do yes. I got to do? Right. Exactly. And I, no offense to anyone who doesn't do that either, because sure. I've done many a film where they wanted Hollywood style too. Sure. You know, perfectly voiceovered, and on and on we go. Right. Right. Uh, my wedding, we did a voiceover, and I brought wireless go twos, and oh, cool. uh, and the the videographer didn't right away know that I was a part of Road. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but you know, as we kind of like got along, you did know, because I wasn't your mic or, or straight up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't like uh, upon the initial conversation with him. You know, because obviously I wasn't going to do my own wedding, and many a people talked about it and joked about right, it. But right. nope, no, it's, I barely Let remember the day. Yeah. I barely remember anything, right? Because you're just in it. Oh you yeah. know, I'm here yeah. to marry her, and let's focus on that. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, but at the same time, I'm still an audio guy. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So as we progressed, I ended up eventually telling him, you know, like by the way, I do work for this company. Have you heard of them? They're like, we're using your microphones when we come and record you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <yes>. cool. <laughs> you oh, know, that's cool. Kind of name, you know, we're, we're well known, you know, and we, we have done well to uh, be one of the names in the industry for that space. And so it wasn't shocker. They also had other brands as well, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I had an upgrade to what he had. And I said, if you'd be cool with it, I'd like to offer you up a couple of these units to be used uh, to whatever you need, just to give you more. Mm -hmm. And right. he was like, uh, please. Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't mad Thank about you. it at yeah. all. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, we use those and we even use them for our voiceovers for, uh, we didn't read our vows. Uh, we did the normal uh, traditional vows you up on stage. In, okay. Okay. But we read letters to each other is kind of like, okay. Cause neither cool. of us could do the whole, like I could sit here and talk to you about microphones all day, but you get me up there in front of my family and yeah. friends and, and, uh, center of attention, lights beaming down. And you're just like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, both of us would absolutely have been, Ugh. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Would have t stumbled all over that. So we did it in private. Right. And uh, read to each other, and they filmed that. It, it turned out beautiful. It was mm -hmm. a voiceover with us kind of in slow motion here and there. Yeah. Some of the getting ready and some of That's the, cool. the knickknacks of the wedding, right? Like the, the rings and the. Right. So right. all that then kind of like got folded into mm -hmm. this video as we read the, the, those over. That's nice. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. And we had a close proximity lavalier in a noisy mm -hmm. environment that worked perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you, it's just about asking. Mm -hmm. And then doing. And if you have limitations, you have limitations. But if you never ask, you have a lot more limitations right from the start. Right. Yeah. Something I find to be very interesting is just how this technology advances over time, which, I mean, you could say that with audio. You can say that with cars. You can say that with Everything. just anything. Yeah. Um, having the uh, the last wedding I shot, uh, last couple of weddings I shot, is uh, using the uh, Rode Wireless Go 2, which was great because mm – -hmm. I did have the uh, receiver on top of one of the cameras, yep. uh, but then I did have uh, the onboard recording, which I think it's like a two-hour battery on that. Two-hour battery to run. Uh, no, seven-hour. So two hours to charge it, full charge. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's where you get in the two hours. Seven hours of charged uh, power mm -hmm. and seven hours of recording Yes. in the full fidelity 2448 uh, quality. Mm -hmm. So almost a full day of work. Right. Just if you just let it go. And just keep it on you the just let it run and let it go. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, after seven hours in full fidelity mode on the Wireless Go 2, you will then just record over those times. Yes, that's yeah. right. So you got to be cautious of not over – like recording over some of your backup. But if you're going into a camera – again, we're talking mm -hmm. redundancy. What I'll usually do is, one, first and foremost, I'm not recording for seven hours straight. Right. So to your point, I might like literally have a laptop over here, plug in the, the transmitters to the mm -hmm. Wireless Go's as – we're transitioning between wedding and reception mm -hmm. 
and dump them real fast. Right. Now I have three redundancies because I'll keep the recording mm-hmm. on the transmitter. And right. then if we happen to get to eight hours somehow, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a great party. Well, you still then, have that earlier part. Yeah. 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 You still have it there until it's recorded over. So now you have three redundancies. And so knowing that and, and the capabilities, like we said, there's mm-hmm. some problems that can happen with phone because it's a budget-friendly thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not anymore. I mean, it, right, phone's expensive, right. but it does so much. And you already have it. Yeah, I was going to say, most of us have that on our person or Correct. very close to us anyway. Yep. Uh, but so. I, I love how that, you know, we were talking about the, the difference between, you know, if, if it's a Catholic wedding and maybe one or two hours, mm-hmm. if it's a non-Catholic wedding. I think our ceremony was like, I, I, I actually edited my own nice. <laughs> wedding video. Brave man. Um, brave, yeah. brave man. <laughs> uh, I think it was like 20 minutes. Like the entire ceremony was 20 minutes. It was nice. a little bit longer with, you know, seating the last few people, you know. Sure. Um, and I, I imagine yours was a round of that. You know, our, yeah. ours didn't last very long. It was anywhere from... Most I've done have been anywhere from like 18 to 25 right. minutes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, it's yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, uh, my wife's Catholic. I'm not Catholic. So we did a hybrid thing. Oh, very um, cool. Yeah. And, and all within the, the regulations and rules and mm-hmm. so forth of uh, what, you know, these are conversations you have with family and friends and figure out what level you are doing this and that yes. to your religious beliefs and so forth. But mm-hmm. yeah, ours was uh, not quite as long, but not, not as short. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, so hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make it work. Yeah. But then I was even thinking of, you know, like a, an Indian wedding, uh, oh, which yeah. I know those can take. Uh, I know there are, there are some other... Those are uh, days. Uh, oh, yeah, there are some <laughs> other beliefs where it, it, it's it's like a couple of days or it's uh, up to a week in some cases. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're probably not going to be recording audio that entire time, but if there right. are certain cases where um, there are sort of certain points in the day mm-hmm. obviously i hope you're offloading at the end of each day you know just to have that or having points and backups throughout yes you know? exactly yeah. and i cannot stress it enough mm-hmm. pre-production yes and you're not going to get straight answers all the way through let's say it is a two-day right. en- en- endeavor you know you said it first and foremost you're you're going to plan dump times <laughs> yes yeah. time to go get your audio and video into a backup mm-hmm. and then open up more record time for yourself in the, yes. in the software and stuff that's the way it all works mm-hmm. right do not be the person who i got enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly because you murphy will fine. get you real fast you know you'll find out real quickly Murphy's waiting oh he's it's waiting. gonna get you he's always gonna get you <laughs> and so you just got to be ready for that and uh again i always apologize for being the audio engineers telling you that you know but in in the case of like our, our newer systems with two microphones one receiver mm-hmm. and onboard recording the new pros have 32 gigs mm-hmm. of audio recording right. they still have the same power limit uh, I believe, sure. but they also charge in the case. So you go to lunch. I love that. Yeah. You go to, and the wireless go to, now you can buy the case separately and add mm-hmm. that accessory on, but you go to lunch, throw them in the case. You're yes. charging now, yes. right? And uh, plug them into the wall, whatever it might be, but like keep that system going. And then secondarily, if you are doing two days, I'm probably having two or three units, right? So right. now I have six microphones all recording on board, all being dumped when I can, mm-hmm. and equally charging when they're not being used and uh, labeled and, and all this pre-production that mm-hmm. is really going into just making sure you capture the moment. Because if you don't capture the moment, it's a extreme bad. scenario, yeah. you might be fired. I, I think it's it's cool that you have that flexibility with time. Um, but also, uh, going back on, on the case on the Wireless Pro, is not only can you, you know, top off your charging with it, you know putting all three of them in the case, but you also have the ability to offload with one cable, yeah. which is super convenient. And then you'll see that on Road Central. I I, I actually I it, I know it's free software and anybody can download it, but yeah. it's incredibly useful, especially if you need to check uh, your recording and make sure um, that this was captured because you can see it. it, it creates that that audio waveform in it, in it like it a, does that you can literally listen back to it yes and, and unlike before where it's either one at a time or all three into three different inputs mm-hmm. and stuff like that with the case you now have the ability to and and kudos to us <laughs> yeah road the people making these decisions above me and so forth that are bringing these products to us the end user mm-hmm. and realizing some of the problems and going well it's not really a problem but we can make it better Right. Back to the point of even the creation of the Wireless Go original, mm-hmm. where it's just like, how do I make this faster, or easier for people? Mm-hmm. Well, putting the microphone in a, in and of itself is is a solution for that. So equally... Are you saying the mic 
into the into device the transmitter itself, which where I, I don't have to awesome. run a lavalier. How that, many videos we've seen where it's just it's right there. the road thing clipped Boom. onto the yep. shirt? Good branding yeah. too, right? You exactly. Know? <laughs> and uh, and we're just trying to give you a solution inside of all of these uh, problems. And when they arise to us and we're, we're notified of them, we do our best to fix them and, and apply them to the product mm -hmm. if it's needed, right? And usually we don't hear about it unless it's needed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we also then upgrade the firmware. And so things like right. reading a file – uh, happen to have its own standalone software is good because mm -hmm. it's kind of in one house, but right. having it useful for multiple people that are not necessarily using a, a third party so or our other software mm -hmm. or uh, wanting to just transfer it like a hard drive or, you know, things mm -hmm. that we've added to the feature set now gives you the choice as the end user right. versus us making you do this or that. So mm -hmm. again, we're taking your feedback, making it apply, we're applying it to the gear where we can, and then if it doesn't mess anything up, mm -hmm. we almost see it as like, why not, right? So right. when I plug in my case for my wireless pro now, I'm in Road Central and I see all three, but my computer notifies me and says, hey, by the way, you got this hard drive in here. Technically right. three hard drives, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in this case, two hard drives and right. a setting for a receiver. Right. So you got two of the transmitters that are then able to be transferred from the, the, the files. Mm -hmm. And what I like Central for is that you have the choices of export. You yes. get to tell it how it exports, what it's going to export to. And mm. uh, if you're in 32-bit float but you don't plan on editing in 32-bit float, you right. can transfer it right there from it. If you drag and drop files onto desktops and stuff like that, we can't necessarily guarantee or control right. any of those stipulations that happen afterwards. Uh, Mm -hmm. Wave files also have some uh, regulations and sure. size file constraints, uh, file constraints and sizes mm -hmm. and things like that. So um, knowing that is crucial for both the end user and road, but we're coming together as a team to make sure that oh, those things are done, people are enjoying it, and it's useful. And I can't give the company I work for more props. Than yeah, exactly. How they do it. They, they really do handle the backside of this really, really well. And not many, not many other companies can say that they answer um, their responses like Road does. Mm -hmm. and they hear it and certainly hear it enough. You know, it's not like we fixed oh, everything. Sure, sure. You hear it enough, we're going to fix it. Well, and I think that's even speaking to uh, with the Roadcaster Pro, the, the original and now to the two because mm -hmm. uh, I know I did hear some customers yeah. going <laughs> they just they just made I'm like even though there there was there was like a good four year period of time in mm -hmm. between the two but they're going you know is is this really that much better I'm like it's better in almost <laughs> every way like I I think the, the design is better yeah you added two more pads on here you know two more buttons I will um, not take away anyone's conversation about the Rodecaster Pro 1 mm -hmm. and uh, needing this or that. When it right. started, I thought, wow, what a response. Yes. Just to even have it, whether it was positive or negative, it was still exciting. Mm -hmm. But it was a little bit of, of a wake-up call. And then also Rode's response to it was one of a kind. Yes. And, and we, all four years or five years of that, whatever it was, uh, from you know, before COVID, into COVID, and after COVID, mm -hmm. and then and then advancing into something once we reached a maximum. But all of those years, we were updating firmware and changing feature sets. And the only thing, obviously, that you can't really change, or at least easily, is hardware. Right. Well, once we maxed out on firmware uh, capabilities and really just the hardware's capabilities from processing speed and things like that, storage, mm -hmm. et cetera, we took those notes, changed the hardware and those features all in yes. one. And created the Rodecaster Pro 2. If you do not need those features in the Rodecaster Pro 2, you always stay at the Rodecaster Pro 1. You're perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being a customer. Yes. When you're ready, call us up for the 2 or the Duo now. Yes. Or whatever comes after that. Right? So it's just the normal conversation mm -hmm. of, of upgrade. And as you said many a times already, like the advancement of technology. Mm -hmm. We can't be perfect when we were released. That is another one that was perfectly uh, industry changing. Mm-hmm. There was nothing that did it all in one. Again, we didn't reinvent there were the a lot wheel. Of copycats right after there you guys made it. There have been a few copycats. <laughs> I plead the fifth on that. Yes, <laughs> and some of them done well and found their own space. And some of them, uh, we're not necessarily doing guitars and stuff like that yet. So there's some mm -hmm. people doing more of the guitar stuff or mm -hmm. or this or that. You know. So again, as a company that's excited about it, we're innovating and then we're looking at those things too. Not as necessarily an insult. 
what, uh, what's mm-hmm. the what's the saying about flattery? You know, and uh, oh, copy, yeah. copying is the uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery. Yes, yes, so great, that's it. You know, mm-hmm. you know, keep. But it's up to us then to keep innovating as well and continuing right. that trend to keep road high on that on that chain. Mm-hmm. And and we want that for you as a customer. Yes. Because if we can create those things, then you win from the result of it as well. So, uh, you know, as I was saying, RCP1 is not hurting anyone if it's exactly what you need. Most podcasters that have been doing it on the Roadcaster Pro 1 since the the concept mm-hmm. came out, uh, they're still doing it there. And right. some have upgraded, some have not. And that's totally fine. It's just absolutely powerful. And again, you used to have to go and buy each individual piece of that to yes. even come close to making it work. Then you had to work on the setup and the signal flow, as we call it, make it, make it functional mm-hmm. and then make yourself not go insane when you try to run it. <laughs> right, right. And so we didn't reinvent the wheel of, of podcasting necessarily. We just gave you a better way to do it. Right. And put it all in one kit. Mm-hmm. Well, and, all in one backpack, right? Now it's all into the uh, exactly into the backpack yeah. that it fits yep. into. The backpack that was came really out, cool. and wow, it's perfect for the two, and uh, it's a little larger for the duo. But I've actually used the duo in there and strap it down, and then it will also hold some of your cables. Mm-hmm. Uh, it all it does is open up more room for you, but super portable and uh, very well made backpack as well. Very mm-hmm. sturdy. It's almost like a camera bag meets a backpack in that it's open up perfectly for a roadcaster pro right. two and any even the one of course mm-hmm. and then microphone slots uh the side pouches are perfect right. for your psa one plus mm-hmm. and or tabletop stands or whatever it might be slide in the base put your stand in the side mm-hmm. pocket and uh it also fits laptops and mm-hmm. paperwork and all kinds of different things too if you're not necessarily toting around your roadcaster but perfect for a roadcaster and all the above well i'm already thinking of uh, a couple of customers that i know have used this uh the the roadcaster pro 2 mm-hmm. as well as some of their cameras i'm automatically thinking of if, if you're doing kind of a show like this and you're taking it on the road uh you know literally to a different location every time uh you know you may be in a truck all the time you know you may be <laughs> traveling everywhere you need to go uh, on an airplane can, exactly <laughs> right. but you can put all of this into a backpack yes. and then we already have backpacks for a lot of camera gear. So you can put two or three cameras and two or three lenses. You can have your multicam set up a lot like how we have here yeah. and have it in two backpacks and take it anywhere you need to. Exactly. Obviously stands are kind of a, you know, yeah. you'll, you'll figure that out. You know, we will, you know, we can help you out with yeah. that. Yeah. You really uh, got to collapse that boom pole down, <laughs> but right. you know, uh, your C stands probably not making it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but I just love the fact that it's, it is portable. Uh-huh. If you need to take it on the road, you need to, you know, take it down every, every time. Um, or if you just want to do it like it is, keep it here. Um, and then put your outs out to a video switcher, yep. you know, uh, which we've had a lot of customers do that as well. So you can yeah. sweeten your audio in one place yep. and then put that out. Once you have your audio the way you need it, put it out to your video and now you can modify, you can switch your video. Yep. Um, it's, it's one bonus pro feature mm-hmm. of the Rodecaster Pro 2 or Duo mm-hmm. is that they actually do have audio delay on it as well. Wonderful. It's master output delay has the ability to delay up to what if? three seconds or something, one second, five seconds. It's a ridiculous amount of time when you're talking about latency. (laughs) (laughs) But point is, I actually run this setup daily in my home studio where Mm. I teach virtual classes and so forth for my job. And uh, I've never once, I used to with the Mm. original Rodecaster, but I've never had to run Mm. the two into the switcher itself. I'll just run the USB from both units into the computer and then choose them both as my independent thing. So audio Mm -hmm. over here, video over there. And then if there is latency for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. uh, a deeper dive into your video setup, then you can delay your video into Mm -hmm. the final result as well uh, to where your video, because video is going to be slower traditionally than audio. And so you can slow down that audio to get to the video at the same time mm-hmm. or in the same place at the same time. Mm-hmm. And now you're you're just perfectly in sync again. No need to run it to your camera or to your interface. But to your point, you still can. You have many different mm-hmm. options on the output and you can run a line level signal to a line level input on, mm-hmm. uh, say, an A10 Mini right. and, uh, and then have that there. What I found is you got to be cautious of your ins and outputs of a Rodecaster Pro mm-hmm. or any audio interface for that matter if you run it to multiple places. And right. multiple times, you know, one of the things I hear a lot about with video is, uh, something like an Atomos, uh, uh, 
monitor or something mm-hmm. like that. Forgive the uh, audio guy yeah, for yeah. now talking about monitoring and video <laughs> and so forth. But, um, you know, they're great recorders mm-hmm. as well. And then uh, they have HDMI inputs, but audio inputs and changes. And again, I'm not going to know the gear perfectly yeah. well, but I've heard of people trying to get audio and video all to that at the same time. And then also still USB to the computer and just, it gets crazy. Sure. But you, uh, but knowing that you have that delay feature and the ability to run them anywhere you might want is mm-hmm. exactly what the board's for. Just like an old radio mixer or otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now you got it in more of a simple form, quick and easy. Exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, normally I say what's, uh, aside from a camera or a lens, so that doesn't quite apply. Uh, we'll see in a few years. So, maybe, so maybe not outside of, outside of a microphone. <laughs> outside of a microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and even, even an XLR cable. That, that's an easy answer. That's a good one, right? Uh, yep. What is an accessory that you always have in your bag on every shoot? What's yeah. something you, you have to have? Okay. Um, two things outside of just the physical microphone. We're not using one right now because we're inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, furry windjammer. Yes. Hands down. Right. <laughs> and podcast is obviously a little bit different, but a pop filter is uh, equally a, mm-hmm. a windjammer of sorts. Mm-hmm. And so windjammer is one of my first answers all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's usually an accessory for many, many microphone brands and stuff. A lot of our microphones will come with a foam version mm-hmm. and just the quick techie part of it. There's three fa- There's three sta- three steps to all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't count not having one because that is a stage, but it's not really sure. included there. Uh, foam, fur, and then what's called a blimp, <laughs> especially oh, yeah. in the film space, right? So foam is going to be more um, that a- initial absorption. Mm-hmm. Fur is going to be what's called diffraction. That's mm-hmm. the nerdy thing you don't have to remember. But why it matters is it's going to split the air mm-hmm. and the energy up into many smaller parts that the foam can then absorb. Mm-hmm. Usually you have fur over foam. Mm-hmm. And so it's a step of a little bit better breakup. So when mm-hmm. wind is coming through, it, it is detrimental and it will really ruin a lot of the low end, especially mm-hmm. of your audio and really break up the energy um, to where you're not hearing you as much as you're just hearing that mess of wind. Right. So furry wind jammer. And then blimps are just like mm-hmm. high, high, high end of like, I have detrimental spaces or I have to guarantee good results. Right. Right. If you're in a budget uh, to where you have to guarantee results mm-hmm. and you can pay for said results, the blimp is just killer in that space. I mean, I've had newscasters talk about hurricane grade winds that they're out there doing newscasting on. Mm-hmm. I thank them for their service and also say, get get back inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yes, that those stair steps, wind jammer, first now, and foremost. What's in a blimp compared to, so we have the foam and then the, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then the not real fur, by the way. I just want people to yeah. know that. Yeah. No, no uh, wombats or, di- or <laughs> kittens were harmed in the making. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? is used inside of a blimp that yeah. helps uh, absorb that sound. Uh, so they, of course, already have all of the things we've already mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. So they have fur. Uh, typically, we call ours the dead wombat. Mm-hmm. And uh, just PC version is a uh, wind jammer, a yes. large wind jammer. And then that hits uh, some plastic that is uh, diffracting some of it okay. and foam. And then that's absorbing. But the best of the blimp, what really the magic of that that happens after all of that is uh, an inch or two of dead air. Okay. So inside of that blimp, you have this space between your microphone capsule. That's right. And then the outside world. So uh, air is actually a bit of an insulator in and of itself. So when you have still air molecules inside of there, they don't move as well Mm. because they're undisturbed. And then when the stuff comes through to disturb it, it's just harder to do so because there's already material there. Mm -hmm. So uh, dead air is what's really uh, separating a blimp from just a standard dead cat. Mm Because as you'll know, your your furry windjammer goes right on top of the microphone. So it's right there. Mm -hmm. No dead space between that. So it's a stair step. Every little mm-hmm. bit's going to help you. I, we're using a microphone, and this has one built into right, it. Right, right. But you get the idea. I can put another one over the top to help with plosives a little bit more mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But if you add then dead air around this microphone mm-hmm. and more capsulation, like a blimp, uh, you can isolate it down to almost perfect uh, standards. And then it will take away a little bit of high frequencies for sure. those out there that know a little bit about this too, but not enough for anything to matter versus okay. wind especially. If you're out in wind... Furry wind jammer. Uh, I do have one other answer for mm-hmm. you, and that sure. is <laughs> so shameless plug for the thread adapter from Rode. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is it's not just because of Rode, but when we came out with that thing, it's my absolute favorite accessory that we sell. <laughs> Short of the cables saving the day, we have a lot yes. of smart cables that really help with the adapting, uh, adapting over and stuff. But 
Cables weren't part of that, right? Because that's a standard. You right, should have right. your cables. Uh, but yeah, a thread adapter has gone so far <laughs> for me to put a microphone in so many different places. Yes. So if you're not familiar with a thread adapter, it is a, I think it goes five eighths down to quarter 20, mm -hmm. quarter 20 up to three eighths. Yes. And then three eighths back down to uh, a quarter 20 that fits in there as well. And so the quarter right. 20 is a quarter 20 to uh, three eighths up. And then the three eighths to five eighths, and then a five eighths back to quarter twenty. So you right. got all three of those in one kit. Be prepared. Yep. And I have two <laughs> or three. Just I have one in my backpack right now. I have one in my Murphy's Law bag that I was talking about. So I mm -hmm. technically have two in my backpack right now, <laughs> and then one in my camera kit. Right? Because yes. it might also be your cameras. Exactly. Yeah. And all those, for the most part, are pretty standard industry things. And so when you don't have that adapter and you're just trying to hang something or put a microphone closer or put a camera up somewhere, mm -hmm. it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So exactly. a couple of those as well. Cool. Well, so that was the tangible. What is an intangible? What's something that's always on your mind uh, when you're on a shoot uh, or when you're on a, a recording session? Something that you want to make sure that... Um, you, you know, you want to, you want to help get from A to B. What's something always on your mind? I am constantly thinking about what I don't want in my mm -hmm. audio. So I say this to audio engineers all the time. We talked about it a little bit with polar pattern. Mm -hmm. It's great to think about what you're capturing, but stop it. Sure. Once you get everything set and kind of where you need it to be. Now, right now we are the talent on the set too. Sure. And you may not want headphones on that or otherwise. We're using dynamic microphones in a right. controlled environment. So those some podcasts can do probably be where okay. everybody has a mic and headphones. If you want to be, time. if you want to do it right, because again, like that is a choice production style wise. Mm -hmm. That especially if you're not videoing, you mm -hmm. know, it's not a big deal. Cables everywhere and it's a right, mess, right. you know. But like with uh, with video and things, sometimes you may not want that. Uh, but if you are able, if you can literally have a friend over off to the side listening to sounds, mm -hmm. my biggest thing that I'm thinking of when I'm that person is not what it sounds like in the story. It's so easy to start thinking about what Tyler's saying. Stop it. Think about that air conditioner over there. Yes. <laughs> Think about that airplane we talked about earlier. Think about the train going by. You are always the bad guy too. Having a really good relationship with your director mm -hmm. or um, your producer, whomever. It might be you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, just not getting mad yourself like when you have to stop your own shoot. Because I promise you it's a million times worse when you get to the production side of it later, mm -hmm. the post, and you go, I got to get rid of a dog bark. Yeah, <laughs> I got to get rid of a train. I got to get rid of a plane. Uh, too much wind. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a wind jammer, so now I got to get rid of wind. Right? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's absolutely horrid. And in best case scenario, you, you re-record. Worst mm. case scenario, you're fired or you don't get the the, the content or mm -hmm. etc. So and so only around. flew in for this day. Yeah. So we can't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta you gotta go try to fake it somehow. Right. You know, um, or you're usually spending more money in that time too, because time right. and money and all that stuff. So, um, what I'm thinking about when I'm on set is not, not just the pre-production that I've mm -hmm. done. That's of course on the sheet. It's, it's, uh, all kind of prepped for in my Murphy's law kit. I've brought right. probably 50,000 more microphones than I need, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but all that's taken care of. It's done. And the microphone's placed in front of you or it's on mm -hmm. you. And so levels are set and we're just now getting ready to go. When you are recording, stop thinking about what you're recording mm -hmm. and think about what you don't want to record and listen for those things. Have your headphones on. Be listening to them. Separate yourself from the action if you can. Because the other thing, mm -hmm. too, is our brains That's are really true. good at tricking us. Mm -hmm. So you'll be hearing that voice, looking at that mouth move, and you'll yes. be going like, this is really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and Murphy will bite you. Yeah. That's exactly. what I'm thinking about. Something I learned uh, much later on that I had to focus on, uh, just as like uh, a as a what I don't want, is I, I'm so used to putting a wireless lav on somebody is necklaces. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> okay, that really turned me. This into just happened in my last interview. That a I did. paranoid person. Oh with yeah, wearing these things, uh, just monitoring the audio at all times. Yeah, um, especially early on, and even paying attention to what people are wearing. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to put the mic if you're wearing a beard or wearing a beard. Yeah, sorry, I can't grow a beard, I so I just yeah. say <laughs> that weird stuff around beards all the time. Uh, I just I assume you just glue it on every morning. I do. <laughs> I'm faking it till I make it. <laughs> I can't grow a beard, and yeah. so that turns into really fun conversations of you're not a man or stuff like not that. Not true but, at all. <laughs> but I guarantee you this beard does not make me I'm just going to say it again. Man. When you're wearing a beard, when you put the beard on in the morning, uh -huh. uh, when you <laughs> – when you uh, when you mic somebody with a, a wireless lav, 
and you have it too close, not just too close to their throat, which uh, is also bad. Is also bad, especially with, with a lot of bass. Uh-huh. Uh, but you have that. If, if it grows really long, <laughs> then you're going to get all of that headsets. noise. Yeah. Oh, headsets. My too. favorite I forgot headsets. about that. Yeah, yeah. You can't place a headset in. You cannot place a headset on a beard. Yeah. Because if it is inside the beard, when you place it, you yes. have to get it outside and the it beard. It will rub because the, the yeah. chin's going to move yep. the, that other hair. Yep. But I was thinking of uh, necklaces. I, it's Man. Bane, another bane of my existence, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just I've had clacking. stopped production <laughs> and I've unfortunately had to have that serious conversation with a producer about look because it's obviously an accessory for mm-hmm. looking good and right and being – it might be a prestige thing or mm-hmm. it just might be uh, – part of your religion, you know, sure, sure. oh my goodness. It's just things that you have to deal with. And, you know, it's either act around it mm-hmm. or change it. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I, I always enjoy us hanging out and uh, seeing you at the shows and uh, and just talking mics. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm talking on mics. It's my pleasure to talk to you as well because we both geek out about it. You know, yes. Bedford's is always amazing. So I thank you and Bedford for always being there for us. Absolutely. Uh, now, how can people uh, follow your work? You know, you're, you're not really a photographer. If you, if you are, great. Yeah. Then then we'll yeah. get into that. But uh, yeah. uh, but you know, how can people follow you or find out what events you're going to uh, with Bedford or others? Yeah. So usually it is through uh, Ryan White at Road com. You can reach me there if you have any questions about audio and road products. I'd be happy to help you there. Uh, I am on Instagram and Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to find Ryan White on Instagram. I'm Audio Ryan. Okay. But uh, I also have a freelance company. Painless Audio, and uh, I don't do a whole lot with those. I really need to get better, but my main gig is road, and I take care of that uh, first and foremost. And then the other stuff is just uh, fun here and there, or as I like to say, keeping relevant in the industry. But it is a place you can find me also if you're just kind of curious about Ryan the guy, <laughs> you know, and uh, feel free to check that out too. But uh, ryan.white at road.com is a great place to just find out all things road uh, through me. Very cool. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, email them, you know, say, hey, what's going on with my recording? You know, yeah. <laughs> help me, please. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but then, you'll, of course, you'll see him at uh, a lot of our, our, our events at uh, in our stores and uh, uh, like we're here online. Exactly. Uh, so, and I hope we see you at the Little Rock show uh, happening in, um, I want to say, May of next year. I believe it's on the calendar already. That's so exciting. I hope to you as well. Very exciting. Very exciting. Well, it's always a pleasure. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll see everyone later.